Hey, what's up, everybody? Super Saiyan Santi of All Gas, No Break. We are back again. We got a special guest, Bernard Wright. I'm going to have him introduce himself because this man has done it all. You've done it all. And uh, you are inspiration to me. After reading about you and what you've done, you motivated me because I feel like I'm following that same path, trying to get to sea level. And technology, though, but yep. more entertainment, but still it's technology. Absolutely. So uh, if you don't mind telling everybody your name, uh, your name of your uh, companies, your websites, how we can follow you, uh, the social media, all that good stuff. Sure, sure. So I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to speak with you. Thank you. Uh, so in terms of my career, it's about 30 years in technology now. So work for a number of different companies and... I am proud of the fact and really didn't pay attention to the fact until recently that I have been at the sea level for four separate billion dollar organizations. Mm -hmm. So the first was EDS, mm -hmm. Electronic Data Systems, Ross Burroughs Company, for people who may not be familiar. I was Chief Technology Officer there and also Technical Organization Delivery Manager over the Law Enforcement Portfolio, which was Homeland Security, Department of Justice, and Department of State. Mm -hmm. So those accounts reported up in terms of their technology and what we're going to do to make sure those customers have what they needed. After that, I was director of technology for Hillary Clinton during her Senate re-election and 2008 presidential campaign. After that, I was CIO for Prince George's County, which is where we're headquartered right now, right second right. largest county in the state of Maryland. Yes, it is. So I was there for six and a half years. Uh, and after that, I was CIO for WSSC Water, which is the eighth largest public water utility in the country. I was also CIO and VP of Operations for Iron Pro Technologies, which is a, now they're close to $2 billion, but a mostly federal contractor. Um, so their IT, information security, manufacturing, operations, and governance reported up to me. Wow. So um, in 2020, uh, most would say, it wasn't a wise decision, but I, I made the decision anyway to start my own company. And I had a conversation with someone just last week about why that happened. So there were a couple of different things that happened in 2020, very visible things. Of course, everyone knows that the COVID-19 pandemic kicked off, mm -hmm. which made a lot of people really consider why they were doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to have work-life balance? Mm -hmm. Uh, so for me, I got to the point where I was pretty burned out in terms of being a CIO. I was really fascinated with being a CEO mm -hmm. and didn't really see the path to going from a C CIO to a CEO within an organization. Mm -hmm. So it's a clear path, at least for me, to be a COO mm -hmm. to a CEO, but not a CIO to a CEO. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. So I said best way for me to make that happen, even though I was making a great salary, is to rip the Band-Aid off and just do it. Mm. So I started the company. Um, another reason I was looking at it in 2020 is what happened with George Floyd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in 2020, I was 47 years old, same age as George Floyd, and that's probably where most of the similarities um, end and begin. Um, because, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of other things in common, but it did make me uh, focus on the fact that in this country, there has been a history that in a lot of ways is being pushed backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that really did a lot of things to me. And i have been quiet in my most of my career about racial things mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just what happens in terms of, I'm not going to say minority, I've been told not to say minority, but diverse people. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly, uh, you know, and I was successful, I think, partially because I was quiet. You okay. know, but at that point, I didn't want to be as quiet anymore, which yeah. causes issues. So yeah. that was another reason why it was time for me to really reevaluate what I did moving mm. forward. Mm. So I started Wave Welcome in 2020 to offer IT and cyber managed <coughs> services for organizations who couldn't typically afford to hire a CIO like myself. A CIO is expensive. Mm. And... What I wanted to do was to make sure the small to medium sized organizations, nonprofits had access to the top levels of technology. Mm -hmm. So I do take pride in not just putting in technology because technology is not the most immediate answer in a lot of cases. It really means that you should change the way your organization is operating, mm -hmm. which a CIO does. 
Um, you should be taking a look at how your people are performing. Do you have the right people? CIO does that. Um, and of course, we are responsible for technology as well, but that's the last thing I take a look yeah. at. Um, when I do, I want to make sure that technology is lining up with the strategy for an organization, which means that you have to have a strategy in place, and if you don't, mm -hmm. it's my job to make sure there's a, strat there's a strategy there. Um, so that was that. We had success pretty quickly um, because of um, my network. I have a lot of people that I can reach out to and you said, on Twitter. I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have every, That's right. every right to have that. That's right, <laughs> yeah. So I was able to say, hey, I'm having a role. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I have a question about sure, that. Sure, sure. Would you say working with, with EDS mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. got you into the door, into the Hillary uh, work for I, I do think so, yeah. but I, I don't know that it was necessarily because of the Ross Perot connection. Okay. I think that at that point, I start to be more visible. Okay. So all of the positions I had, all of the C-level positions, I don't know if people realize this, but I didn't apply for any of them. Now, wow. You know, so. They reached out to you. They reached out to me. Wow. So that, that's one of the things that I try to emphasize to people. You do have a brand. You do you know, so you do have to make sure that people know you exist because there are opportunities that are never advertised. How do you make them know that you exist? Well, so I think that in IT, a lot of times we tend to fade to the background. Yes, I noticed that a lot. I've never been that guy. Okay. I've never been that guy. So, so you were opposite of what the IT managers no, manager or C-suite normally are. Yeah, so from an early age, I was fascinated with success. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in a very much blue collar household. My mm -hmm. father worked 35 years for the post office. And, you know, it's not a knock against them because my father was one of my heroes. That's right. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't have anyone around who I considered to be an executive. Mm -hmm. But I always saw executives. I mean, back then in the 80s, and I don't know he has a bad name now, but the Cosby show was on. You see a doctor and a lawyer. Yes, yes. And I'm like, wow, this is, but that was foreign to me. Yeah. So I really wanted to understand what success meant and work my way backwards mm -hmm. and try to form the path to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, it was just one of those things where, you know, I just slowly figured it out. And one of the things that makes you successful is, make, you know, promoting what you know, mm -hmm. uh, which goes against black culture a lot of times because we're mm -hmm. taught to be humble. Mm -hmm. And there is a difference between being boastful and just saying, hey, here's what I did. It's a fact. It's not yeah. it's not me bragging or I'm not lying. I actually did these things. Yeah. And, and it's OK yeah. to say, OK, here's what I did. You know, but when you're saying, okay, I was the one who was responsible, for, you know, because you, you're the one who's going to get blamed if this thing goes wrong <laughs> for making sure this multi-million dollar project succeeds, I'm, you know, yes, it's me and my team, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to say I didn't have anything to do with it when I did. That's right. So yeah. you have to talk about those things when you have success. I enjoyed one of your stories about why you moved from 40K a year mm -hmm. to uh, yeah. C-suite. Yeah. That's about your wife. That's right. You might touch it on that a little Absolutely. bit. I love that story. My yeah, wife. yeah. So my wife actually added some color to it <laughs> just over the weekend. So I went to University of Maryland, Smith School of Business. Go we were talking about that. Go Terps. Go Terps. We were talking about that earlier. And I graduated. I got married to my wife at 22. Wow. Now, I'm one of the few. Yeah, I'm one of the few where that actually worked. And, Congratulations. You know, I give her more credit than I give myself for, for that being the case. Thank you. Uh, so I remember, you know, I was working in finance and contracts administration. I was probably making 45 at the time. You know, I'm happy with my, you know, that I was good. Yeah, you were okay. Yeah. So she told me the whole story. <laughs> she said she came home. She was a cosmetologist, mm -hmm. by, which is what she is by trade. Pulls a wad of money out of her pocket. And she said, here is your paycheck, your $45,000 paycheck. And I made more today than you did in two weeks with her hair, with the hair mixed in with the money. But it, it was, you know, it was cash, cold cash, cold, cold cash, cold mm -hmm. cash. And she said, what's wrong with this picture? 
So I got into IT to make more money than my wife, and it ended up working out. I mean, I passed her quickly, uh, you know, but I, I didn't have as much cash as she did. But, you know, I made sure she saw that paycheck. Yeah, I got you beat. Hey, hey. So that motivated you. That's so great. How does she feel about that when you say that story? Does she, oh, she loves she it. Loves I mean, it's, it's what she wanted. She got, she got the outcome she was looking for. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, you said Lies. all breaks, no gas. She wanted to take her foot off the gas. Yeah, How about that? She completely wanted to take it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Your there turn. You go. Yeah, Your that's turn. right. You're it. So what was that exact role you had at that nonprofit? What was that time? So I was an operations and technology coordinator. So you so, were somewhat in the... Yeah, so... And this is one of the things where I give that boss credit. Okay. So his name is Frank Beetle de Palomo. I was working for the Academy for Educational Development. So Frank is one of the people, and there have been these shifts um, throughout my career, but it was because someone gave me a shot. Mm -hmm. So he was one who gave me a shot because when I was hired, I was hired as an operations coordinator. Mm -hmm. And that was really doing finance and contracts administration. I told him, because my wife, you know, laid down the gauntlet. Hey, I'd like to get into technology. So he, he added technology to my title. Mm -hmm. So that was my first paid position mm -hmm. in technology. So I became an operations and technology coordinator, which set me on the path. I was doing like web development, um, some graphic design, but it was. But you had a business admin like, degree. I did. I so did. how did did you on your own take time to learn tech? Where was tech coming in? Yeah, I did, absolutely. Okay. So I had a job after AED where I went to go work for Digix. A lot of people in the technology industry remember Digix. Digix used to host Walmart.com, Hallmark.com, Ford.com, and they made a lot of business hosting some seedier websites as well. Okay, Digix. You know, yeah. yeah, Digix. Yeah, they were a huge web hosting company. Yeah. Um, you know, but there... I became a cold fusion developer. And so I got hired to be a cold fusion developer. Here's the thing, I did not know a bit of cold fusion. So what I did, I was able to bluff my way through the interview and I got the job and I had, I gave myself a couple of days to learn cold fusion. So it, that's, it's been that way. What did you do, how did you learn back then? Cause we don't have, well, wasn't Google, wasn't yeah, AI. Yeah, so the good thing about this position is in in coding there's something called commenting mm -hmm. you know where there's the code but then there are the comments that mm -hmm. go along with the code whoever was there before me did a good job of commenting the code so i could read through it and say okay here's what this command does mm -hmm. and you know i had the aptitude to be able to do it yeah. and cold fusion was straightforward enough because it has something called studio mm -hmm. where you could be developing it and you can see the output of the code right next to it. Uh -huh. You know, so you design it, you see it coming up. Yeah, that's the right thing. That's what I want to happen. So I was able to pick it up quickly. I love that you said that. There's an, I, I love memes and all that. Mm -hmm. I'm online. Social media, is, we do really well on social media. But one of the things, I saw a meme recently said from a young man that joined Lucas. I think it was like Lucas uh, film, Star mm -hmm. Wars. He didn't know anything about video, video gaming or graphic arts, but he learned on the job. And he mm -hmm. said, sometimes you have to hire people that don't know, and then it boosts them That's to right. learn. That's right. You were one of those people. Yeah. And you have expanded it, though, That's since right. then. Well, I mean, it, it's one of those things where, and I, even now I still have the same mindset, you can never stop learning. Yes, I agree. You always have to challenge yourself. And I get really bored if I can predict what I'm going to be doing from a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So I always, and I'm a part of something called Vistage. So it's a CEO peer mentoring group. And one, one session we were talking about what we do as CEOs. Yeah, wow. And with a, as a CEO, if things are too quiet, you know what we do? What do you do? We blow it up and figure <laughs> out something new to do. You find something wrong. Yeah, I mean, let's let, all right, I'm done here. So yeah. let me go add another challenge. And I've always been that person. I wonder if that's what I'm doing in life, or that's just happening magically. Because it's always, always blowing up for me, yeah. and I'm always trying to figure it out. Oh my goodness! Okay, so I, I know I'm on the right path. I yeah. got, I, I'm getting your book, by the way. I appreciate that. So, if you could talk about a little bit about this area, because this show is about the DMV. I'm mm -hmm. so DMV focused. I was raised in New York, uh, early life, but then I moved here at like 11, 10, and I've been from Virginia to Maryland, and I love it here. Yeah. I love the DMV. Yeah. And Maryland, I'm, I'm home now. I'm in PG County. I love okay. PG. Okay. Uh, you started in this area. 
Mm -hmm. I did. If you don't mind telling us a little bit about your upcoming, like your, your upbringing in this area mm -hmm. as a young man. Yeah, so I grew up in a, a neighborhood called Hillcrest Heights. Everyone knows Temple Hills, but where I lived, my neighborhood was Hillcrest Heights. Mm -hmm. There are multiple neighborhoods inside Temple Hills. Mm -hmm. Mine was the one that's right across the southeast line. Okay. So Hillcrest Heights, to fast forward to me being CIO for Prince George's County, was one of the six neighborhoods that the county executive at the time, Rashawn Baker, said gave Prince George's County its bad reputation. Mm -hmm. And looking back, it was justified. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but back then it was just home. Yeah. So it was a hard scrabble kind of, you know, where a lot of fighting and other yeah. things went on. But at the same time, it gave me a little bit of an edge that served me long term. Mm -hmm. You know, so. What would that edge be? So that edge is, you know, that you can't be a pushover. Yeah. You cannot be a pushover. Yeah. You know, so there, the parallels are in business, it's a competition. It is a fight, mm -hmm. you know, because you're competing against other companies that offer the same services. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing as being in a neighborhood like that. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we, it, there are all of these petty dynamics I, in a neighborhood like that, mm -hmm. you know, where you're from this street, I'm from this mm -hmm. street, and, you know, there, there's the conflict. Mm -hmm. But same thing in business. But that is, from an early age, that was put into it. Mm -hmm. You know, that it was, you've got to take care of yourself. Yeah. You know, that we didn't have a lot growing up. I'm the oldest of five kids. Like I said, my father worked for the post office, didn't make a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, so I talked about 45000 when I was 23. My father never made more than 45000 base salary. Mm -hmm. You know, so he had night differential. You know, he would do overtime mm -hmm. to get the revenue up. Mm -hmm. But looking back, I don't know how he did it. I should have stayed in with my mother. Yeah. I was raised by a single mother. And yeah. I, 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 have, I have three boys. She mm -hmm. raised two kids. And I don't mm -hmm. know how. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have no idea how he made that work. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I knew we weren't the richest, but I didn't feel poor either. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the same time, it really taught me the value of money. Mm -hmm. uh, I got, I knew what I wanted. I knew what I didn't want. Mm -hmm. You know, and I knew that. Growing up, I didn't have designer labels. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted designer labels, I had to earn the money to get it. So I started working at 14. Mm -hmm. My first job was 14, selling newspaper subscriptions door to door. Mm -hmm. After that, I worked for Popeyes. You know, mm -hmm. so I worked for UPS. Mm -hmm. um, back then, it was National Tire and Battery, NTD. Wow. You know, I, I did all of these things. I, I'm happy that you, you touched on those jobs. Yep. They got So you understand the people. That's right. That's right. Of this. Yeah, I mean, and it's also important for people to understand that I didn't just appear as a CIO yeah, either. Yeah. There was a long path to get to that point. Yeah. You know, so there are a lot of things that will never show up on my resume jobs that I had. Yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah. had eight years of federal experience, mm. you know, working in the federal government as a federal employee. Yeah. You know, but these are all things that really put me on the path. And you take little things from mm. every job, every experience that you're a part of. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's tremendous because sometimes, you know, I speak to a lot of youth, they don't see that that outcome could be. Right. They just don't. This is impossible. This right. is where it's at right now. And I and I would say, you know, like you say, don't settle. Mm -hmm. Blow it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Pull off that Band-Aid. That's right. Jump into that fire. Maybe you might trigger something inside of you that you didn't know he even mm -hmm. had. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's great stuff. So, and, and something else I'll touch on there yes. is that, of course, as young people, it's because of social media, everybody wants to be a CEO. <laughs> I'm a CEO. <laughs> Not knowing what it means to be a CEO. Mm -hmm. And if I were a CEO any sooner than I was, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been ready. Mm -hmm. So all of those things across decades long career really put me in position to be successful. And it's still not easy. Okay. I mean, there's still things that come up where I'm like, wow, you know, it gets, it's not, I say over and over again, it's not for the faint of heart, yeah. being a CEO, and especially being a CEO that has to make payroll every two weeks exactly. and pay a lease every month. Yeah. And that's just part of your expenses, you know? So to be a CEO, there's a lot that goes into it. And so you have to learn what it means, whether it's through school, whether it's working your way up, you know, whether it is founding your own startup, mm -hmm. you know, but you really have to learn what it means to be a CEO because it is not easy. It's not supposed to be, though. 
Yeah, I mean, if it was, like, everyone, everyone, everyone would be a CEO, and then yeah. where, 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 where's the team? Everyone's you know I mean? a CEO. That's right. Man, congratulations on Appreciate all that it. you've done, because that's motivation for me. Uh, and uh, I love the program that you created. One question I had was, the program, what, what are the criteria for the young folk to join mm -hmm. your program, the name of the program, and how do, how do they contact you? to get into this program as well. Yeah, so... Because uh, you're all about diversity I and am. technology. Absolutely, yes. 100%, 100%, and we, I hope we talk about yes, that. Yeah, I would love to talk more about that. Yeah, so it's cracking the C code. Cracking the C code, yeah. That's, that's the curriculum. So right now, it is free for people to take part in it. Mm -hmm. So you can go to crackthecode.com. That's one way that you can crack go the out there. Crackthecode.com, guys. That's right, crackthecode.com, and you can go through the curriculum, you can read the book, you can do all of those different things through that. There's also a mobile app that's available for download on iOS and Android called Crack the C Code. The book is called Cracking the C Code. Cracking, that's the biggest difference for the book, and also for the curriculum. So what we're doing is we're focusing on 12 different soft skills that are necessary for people to get to the C level and succeed at the C level based on things that I've learned across my career, some lessons I had to learn the hard way, mm -hmm. because I do share a case study in each chapter mm -hmm. about why it's necessary for me to learn those things in order for me not to experience those same challenges again. Mm -hmm. um, so they, there's that. In terms of how they can get in contact with me, I'm very active on LinkedIn. Yes, you are. And I'm the only Bernard right in the world, so I'm easy to find as long as you get those two ends in there. Are you sure you're the only Bernard right? I am. I, I've done you, searches. You've done some, searches? Uh, unless someone pops It's not the two ends? It, I, I, I don't know. I, don't even, I haven't even seen a, a one end yeah. right.com. Wow. Yeah, yeah wow. I'm the only one right. I now. have a few friends at Bernard. I, yeah. I, I never asked their last name. Bernard Wright. I never asked their last name, but I didn't ask Yeah, yeah okay. there might be some others, but no, not Bernard. You would know. You're 19. You would know. Yeah, you would know. yeah. <laughs> believe me, I've searched. And, you know, there, there's a story I wrote about in the book about that. There was a guy who worked for me who I had to make a tough decision to let go, mm -hmm. and his way of getting me back. He went out and bought BernardWright.com, and he's still sitting on that domain to this day. He's sitting on BernardWright.com. Oh, my goodness. So what I do is if you want to get in contact with me, I have BernardW.com, which oh, okay. is shorter than BernardWright.com. Okay, so we're okay. With BernardW.com. That's what he did. That's right. Yeah, he's, still, petty. he's renewing it. Yeah, he renews it all the time. <laughs> every year. Yeah, holds it, yeah. Oh, every couple years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. That's yeah. Cool. Oh, you mean you can laugh about it, though? Yeah, absolutely. That's all you can do. Yeah. That's all you can do. I mean, I made the guy an offer, you know, but he's holding the grudge that long. Oh, man, you got to yeah. let those go, yeah. man. But, you know, all you're doing is great, and you're getting the youth involved. And, and yeah, you want to talk about diversity and mm -hmm. technology. I, I'm all about that. I'm mm -hmm. all about that. My buddy created That's this right. shirt, Black Tech Matters, That's right. down in Atlanta. That's right. uh, and he's all about getting the youth to understand, yeah, there's more we can do. Mm -hmm. This is why I like about podcasting, because people think, okay, it's just recording, and it's but you have to learn how to use this technology. You have to learn how to use computer. You have to learn how to use Final Cut Pro editing software. Then you start learning about all the technology and mm. computer space, RAM. That's right. It starts to, okay, now you need to know tech. That's right. And that's why I'm, I'm pushing tech heavy that's right, right now myself. To that's right. That's what I'm all about. I'm also trying to work with Prince George's County to create a program for podcasting to influence tech. So talk to employee Prince George's. Yes, I am. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm with them right now. I am very currently. Good, and that's good. why you saw me that day. Very good. They brought me on to very check good. out the event. I've been going to a lot of events. That's why I met you. Yep. And when they said everything you were doing, I, I'm sitting there Googling you. I'm like, this guy is unbelievable. I got to talk. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I, I, am, I am blessed. There, there's yeah. certainly a lot of, there's luck. Um, you know, and it's just making. Do you think it's luck? Because you said you, you thought uh, it was part, like so at part, first. So part, part, of it, part of it is. Okay. I, I, so before, I solely attribute it to luck. Mm -hmm. And it's not just luck. There has to be some luck, mm -hmm. certainly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you take a look at, and I think it was in the book Outliers, mm -hmm. where, you know, yes, these people put in their 10,000 hours, but there's still an element of luck. Yeah. Luck by itself doesn't explain it, mm -hmm. because when that opportunity presents itself, you have to be prepared to exploit it. Yes, I want to say so, that. So, yes, but yes, there is some luck. And here, here's, here's why I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Number one, I would say that it's luck that any of us is born. Mm -hmm. You know, so you think about everything that has to happen for you to be born. Mm -hmm. Then, number two, for me, I was born in the U.S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I was born in the U.S. in the Washington, D.C. region, which gives its own set of advantages. Mm -hmm. Then I was born in the Washington, D.C. region, 
to two parents who are making sure I'm on the right. So I mean, you can just continue. Yeah, yeah. Then I then I got yeah. with my wife. I mean, it, so all of these yeah. things, but that by itself doesn't explain it. Mm -hmm. I was given a certain amount of intellect. Mm -hmm. I was given opportunities, and like I said before, I've always been fascinated by success. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was driven to succeed. So when I was yeah. at a certain level, I wasn't happy at that level. Yeah. I would always push. And right. if that opportunity, if that opportunity wouldn't present itself in that organization, then I go to another organization yeah. that would give me that opportunity. But you were always learning more. That's right. You were always wanting more. Yeah. But you also worked to get yeah. the more you wanted. And I believed I was worthy of it. Yeah. And you had the confidence. Yeah. That's right. It's that's huge right. Too. You gotta have the confidence. And that's where sports comes in. Yeah. The teamwork Absolutely. in sports. That's right. You training. That's right. A lot of athletes. That's right. And I was an athlete too. So, well, yeah. I was an athlete. That gives you a chip on your shoulder. You, you got yeah. this thing that you think you got to be right. the best. That's right. So you, you got to believe you're the best. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And you move with yeah. it. That's why I don't get upset when I hear someone says, I'm number one. Yeah. You're supposed to believe you're number That's one. right. And That's don't right. let no one else take that away until someone shows you that they may be better. That's right. But then you got to work harder in the gym. That's right. And beat them again. Yeah, well, I'm gonna tell you, I, there are times when, you know, cause, because I used to run track, yeah, and there was this one guy who would line up, and I said, okay, well, we're, we're racing for second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, that's new. I'm not beating this guy, but I'll be, I'm gonna beat everybody else. But, but how did, did you ever beat him? No. Never beat him. <laughs> no, nah, this, this guy. No, nah, this this guy, no. That was his talent. Nah, nah. That was his talent. Yeah, just like him, yeah. yeah. So even with, uh, you know, playing against Michael Jordan in his prime. Yeah. They knew, they knew Michael Jordan was going to do something in yeah. there. But hey, you know what? Maybe I get lucky today. You know? Why not? Yeah, yeah. Th there's, uh, Rex Chapman, uh, I don't know if you follow basketball. Yeah, Rex Chapman, absolutely. they say he was schooling Mike on the court. Yeah. But Mike's like, so what? I won rings. You that's know what right, I mean? Like, right. You have some video of you doing okay. That's Here right. goes my championship. That's right. That's right. So, you're right. All right, so let's go for the championship. I go for the gusto. That's right. I'm all about the, I'm all that's for right. the gusto. You know, I thank you so much. I'm going to yeah, jump into some more questions here because I want to speak on your AI technology. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Thank you. In 2020, mm -hmm. when did you come up with the idea of that? Like, how did that, how did the idea form for you to go, yeah. Whoop, this is my idea? I got to. So I knew that when I started the company yeah. in 2020, I eventually wanted to transition away from being a services company into being a product company. Reason being is because the one of the biggest reasons I'm in business is to build wealth. Yeah, well, not just for myself, but those around me. I'm, I'm all and, for that. No. Yeah, <laughs> and one of the most straightforward ways. Yes, you can become wealthy with a services company. Absolutely, a lot of. But you can burn out. With you can burn out. You can cap. You there are a lot of people in the space. I mean, it's just a harder path. Yeah. It is. Now, if you can come up with a product that really works then that's a pretty quick path yeah. to become And then you can sell it and they can there work it. And on its own, it's being purchased. That's right. You can that's put right. a team behind each thing. You got that's regions right. you know, that's to right. expand faster. So I was yeah. always looking for something that could become a product. Yeah. You know, so I tried a few different things. The reception wasn't necessarily what I wanted it to be. But then there was an incident in May of 2023. <laughs> Well, all right. Say sweet talk. What do you know about that all gas, no brakes? Man, I heard about that all gas, no brakes. I don't think they gonna let me on. I ain't got a damn thing to talk about. Boo, they talk about everything. This is all gas, no brakes. Oh. Don't step on the brakes. Don't step on the brakes. Well, I'm a boy. 